All right. Now the next thing we need to do will be to go ahead and try to register our users using the Firebase authentication. Now the first step that we need to take will be to return back to our Firebase console because we need to enable Firebase authentication before we can start registering users. So I'm going to go to the left hand side of our Firebase console and I'm going to click on authentication. So we need to go ahead and set up a sign in method. There are actually a lot of sign-in methods that are available here. So we can either go with email and password, phone, Google, Play Games, Facebook and all. But the one that we're interested in is email and password. So I'm going to go ahead and enable this and click on save. So this is where we can find all the users that has been successfully registered on our app. So their information is going to be here. So let's return back to Visual Studio and continue with the setup. Now the next thing we need to do will be to go to projects and go to manage nugget package. So we need to install Firebase authentication into our app. So I'm going to go ahead and search for xamarin.ios.firebase.auth. Okay, so this is the package that we're interested in. So I'm going to go ahead and add the package. Accept this. So now that we successfully installed Firebase authentication, the next thing we need to do will be to go into our register view controller and start implementing our registration. Now the first thing we need to do will be to go ahead and create a click event handler for our register button. So I'm going to have register button dot touch up inside. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this. Now the first thing we need to do will be to go ahead and retrieve the values of full name, phone, email and password that the user provided. So I'm going to have full name, All right? So I'm going to go ahead and say full name. This is going to be equal to full name test, the test. So this is where we are going to be getting the value of our full name. So we need to go ahead and do the same thing for phone. We're going to do the same thing for our email. We're also going to do the same thing for the password. Before we proceed and register the user using Firebase Authentication, there is always a very good need to do some data validation. We need to confirm that the full name that the user provided is a valid full name. So things like that need to be checked before we can proceed. So I'm going to use an if statement to do simple data validations. So I'm going to say if full name dot length. A valid full name should be at least up to five characters. So I'm going to say if full name is less than five. So this means that any full name that is less than five characters is going to be considered to be an invalid name. Now what I want to do will be to go ahead and display a pop-up or an alert dialog that will tell the user to provide a valid name. So to do that, I'm going to save our alert. This is going to be equal to UI alert view controller. So I'm going to go ahead and create this alert. So the title of this alert dialog is going to be alert and the body or the message is going to be please enter a valid name and the alert controller style is going to be alert. Now the next thing we need to do will be to go ahead and add an action. So I'm going to have alert dot add action. So, so I'm going to have UI alert action dot create. So the title of our action is going to be OK. In cases where you need to have OK and cancel, it's also very possible to have more than one alert action in your alert controller. So I'm going to go ahead and provide a style. The style is going to be default and the handler is going to be no. So we don't want it to do anything. So one that when we click on OK, the alert controller will just vanish. So I'm going to call the present view controller method to go ahead and display our LAT. And we don't have a callback to it. So this is a mistake. This is supposed to be present view controller. All right. So if this condition is true, the next thing we need to do will be to go ahead and exit this method. So we've successfully done data validation for our full name. The next thing we need to do is to do some data validation for our phone number as well. So a valid phone number should at least be up to seven digits. 
So I'm going to go ahead and say else is phone dot length is less than eight. So I'm going to just go ahead and copy this and paste this here. But this time around, I'm going to tell the user to provide a valid phone number. Right. So we need to also go ahead and do data validation for our email address. At least our email address is supposed to contain the at sign. So if it doesn't contain the at sign, it means that um, our email address is wrong and invalid. So I'm going to have if not email dot contains at. Right. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and paste this same code I copied earlier on. So I'm going to go ahead and say please enter a valid email address. Alright, and finally, we need to do the same thing for our password. A valid password should also be at least up to 8 characters. So I'm going to have if password.length is less than 8. So the message I'm going to put up here will be please enter a password up to 8 characters. Alright, so now that we've successfully done all the necessary data validation, the next thing we need to do will be to go ahead and register our user. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and say auth. So let's go ahead and resolve this. So I'm going to have auth dot default instance dot create user. Right. So we need to go ahead and pass it our email and password. And the next thing we need to do will be to pass a completion handler. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and say alt data result. So this is going to be alt result. And here we're going to have ns error. So this is going to be error. All right. So this is what we need to have. So the create user method will go ahead and create a new user using the email and password. And also we went ahead to use an anonymous method or a lambda expression to implement our callback. So this callback is necessary to confirm to us whether the registration was successful or not. So to confirm if the registration is successful, we need to first of all confirm that we didn't have any error. So I'm going to say if error is equal to null. So this is to really verify that we didn't run into any form of errors while we are registering the user. So if we didn't experience any error, the next thing we need to do will be to try to grab the user instance. So I'm going to say var user equal to alt result dot user. So I'm going to go ahead and say if user is not equal to null. So this means that the registration is successful because the user instance has not been successfully created. So what I want to do will be to go ahead and display an alert that says registration is successful. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this and paste this here. So copying and pasting sometimes could save us a lot of um, stress. So I'm just going to go ahead and say registration is successful. Was well, successful rather. All right. So if there is error, what we need to do will be to go ahead and display what the error is all about. So I'm going to go ahead and change the title of this view of this alert to be error. And the message is going to be error.localized description. So we need to kind of get the description of what the error is all about. So this is all we need to do here. Now to confirm that everything works, let's go ahead and run our app. This time around we are going to be making use of an emulator. So let's go ahead and run our app. Okay, so app is fully loaded. So I'm going to go ahead and provide our first name, say you Phoenix Academy. And I'm going to go ahead and provide if a random phone number. And I'm going to provide the email address. So I'm going to go ahead and leave the password to be vacant. So let's go ahead and see the effect of the data validation that we did. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the register button. Boom. So as you can see, we now have an alert that says please enter a password up to 8 characters. So doing data validation is always very important because it saves you a lot of headache in running into unnecessary errors. So I'm going to go ahead and provide password. All right. So let's go ahead and click on register. Boom. And we have an error. 
So because we did an error check, that's why we are seeing this. And the description of the error is that an error occurred when accessing the keychain. So this is one of the issues that you might actually run into when you're trying to make use of Firebase authentication. But there is a very easy way of sorting this out. All we just need to do is to go into our Solution Explorer. And we're going to click on entitlement.plist. And there we need to scroll down to where they have keychain. So all we need to do is to go ahead and enable keychain. All right. So after we've done that, we need to go to our info.plist and go to bundle signing options. And we need to select custom entitlement. So the custom entitlement is going to be entitlement.plist. So we need to select this file and everything will just be fine. All right, so this is all we need to do. Now let's go ahead and try to register another user. So the registration was actually very successful. We only ran into some errors because of keychain issues and all of that. So now that we resolved the keychain issue, I'm going to go ahead and delete this account. And we need to go ahead and try to register again. So let's go ahead and run our app one more time. Okay, so let's go ahead and provide the necessary details. So I successfully provided all the necessary information. So I'm going to go ahead and click on register. All right, so as you can see, the registration was successful. And now if we decide to go to our Firebase console and refresh, so here in the authentication page, we can see the email address and the user ID of the user that we just registered. So this will be all for now. See you in the next class.